Hello, everyone around the world. 71 countries came in. 69 countries are on their way home. Two remain, and there's one trophy to split between them. It's France and Hungary, an all-European clash, a Hall of Famer in Levy leading France, and the decorated Tamás Nag leading the Hungarians. We're underway. Rich Hagen, Brian Ava Marshall, and Louis Scott Vargas with you here in the booth. And we're underway with Gabar Kocsis of Hungary. They see Jan Guthmann of France. So, BDM, what are we looking at in terms of the matchup here? Well, this looks like uh, Guthmann's playing uh, blue-white flash with uh, Rune Chanter's Pike, and uh, Kocsis is playing green-white hexable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Luis, who wins in this matchup? Uh, you know, I actually wouldn't be able to say because I haven't seen the green-white deck play out as much, but I kind of like the look of the, the green-white deck's combination of Advent of the Worms as instant speed big threats and Sublime Archangel as delivering like a, a ton of a punch. I, I got to tell you, I'm really excited to see Sublime Archangel get a little airtime. Yeah, and I think that uh, if if the green-white deck can stick a Strangrew Geist into like a Silver Blade Paladin, in Force of Wrath, Strangrew Geist comes yeah. back, you attack, maybe you play a Sublime Archangel, get a little few points through. If you can end up with your mana untapped and the blue-white deck having to tap out and then add another worm to finish things off, the green-white deck actually has a really good chance to, to do that. And we kind of saw that in the finals of uh, Pertor Dragon's Maze. Right? Yeah, with I mean, Advent of the Worm as a trump against tapping out to clear a board. Yeah, and uh, Craig Wesco's deck was a little lower curve, but, uh, yeah. you know, same principles. So we're well underway now, and in the early game, as you would expect, it's Gabor Kocic who is getting the early lead. Um, there's an Avacyn's Pilgrim there. There's a Stranglerout Geist piling in already and just three land for Yan, but that's pretty much what you would expect at this point. This time it's for mana, and this time it is. Here it comes, Sublime Archangel. It's 4-3, it's exalted, it gives everything else exalted, and that's why you're going to see a no thank you very much from Jan Guthman. Jan Guthman hates fun. <laughs> <laughs> also, I mean, Dissipate is not the card you want in this matchup to begin with, so getting a chance to use it on a good four drop is insane. Uh, you can't dissipate Loxon on Smiter, so you're already kind of running the risk when you have the card in your deck, which, you you know, you, ha you have to game one. And, and to some extent, he wants to get spells into his graveyard for his Rune Chanter's Pike. Yep, which you see there, he's uh, cast that out, so that'll give first strike plus X plus O, according to the number of instants and sorceries in the graveyard, as we're about to see a mutable come down, reprinted in M14. You see a Selesnya's Charm there, and Avacyn's Pilgrim. Uh, for Gabor on the right-hand side of your screen. And now I would like to put a little enchantment on here. It's a Rancor, plus two, plus naught, and Trample. And in comes a slightly more angry Pilgrim, along with the Strangle Root Geist. And uh, Guthman will take plenty of damage there as he's dropping down to half of his initial life total. And now how about a Voice of Resurgence? <laughs> what do you reckon, Jan? The, the, the hits just don't stop. I mean, these are all the cards that Coxis wants to draw. He's got Rancor, which is a recurring threat, Mutavault, which attacks past a wrath, and Voice, which makes all the counter spells and Restoration Angels much more risky. Right, three, three of those cards come back in one form or another after yeah. a wrath. Like, look, a wrath is happening, so. <laughs> and Gabor's <laughs> going to be able to attack for almost as much damage, if not more, than he did last turn. Okay, so it comes back. So it comes <laughs> Come back. back. I get a token. I My get Mutavault's a two -two. still alive. Yeah, Rancor yeah. comes back. <laughs> He's down an elf. Yeah, he's down an elf and up an elemental. The angry pilgrim Solomon Kane goes to the graveyard. <laughs> so Gabor, 16-10 ahead, but it's really about the 10 and whether he can get that to zero before Yan starts to pile up his mana and starts casting things like Sphinx's Revelations, which well, are very yeah. <laughs> bad news. It's actually just got lethal on the board. He just activates Mutavolt, plays Rancor, attacks 3, 6, 8, 10. Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't even need the Celestia charm. Wow. <laughs> So here we have some Petal Grove coming down. And um, one imagines that they're going to have a conversation about this. Um, the uh, French players having a little discussion, and one imagines they're saying, yeah, I'm tapped out and I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. I, think I had to do it, though, or I was dead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he had yeah. no other spells to cast, so you might as well go for it. But he had, like, a Snapcaster Mage, which wasn't going to be, you know, an incredibly effective blocker here, so... So Mutavault turns the uh, elemental token into a 3-3. Three, three. Right, the Strangler Geist already was a 3-3, three, three, and then Rancor, you know, can deal the final two. So that's eight, and... <laughs> yep, because the <laughs> elemental is See if he can get the rest deep. of the way there. There we go. Uh, put that on there. <laughs> We're not sure where it's on, but it's somewhere, and that's all that counts. <laughs> Perhaps they could carry <laughs> it between them. They're soul-bonded with yeah. a Rancor. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love the fact that his opponent's tapped out, and you get a sense of 
what a big stage this is and what a huge moment this is in these players' careers as Gabor is, like, very tentatively doing that. Yeah. You can play Magic at a store near you every Friday, earn Planeswalker points, and battle against your friends in Friday Night Magic. August 7M promo card is Demir Charm. Visit wizards.com forward slash FNM to find a store near you. So it's 1-0 at the front table uh, to Hungary, and we are going to take you to a game that is in progress. It is the middle table, and regular coverage watchers will know the face of Rafael Levy from the Hall of Fame. France been there for the very beginnings of the game, only 31 years old, but has been playing at the Pro Tour level since at least 1999 and back. Uh, just a tremendous, tremendous record, over 540 lifetime pro points. So he's on the left of your screen as you look, and he is playing a mono green, very aggressive deck, very interesting, and he's up against one of the staples of the format, blue, white, red flash, piloted by Evan Hossu, there you see him, for Hungary. And, and this is kind of like the matchup we just saw. You know, Levy has you know fewer planes and angels in his deck, but still has rankers and Strangroot guys, and is still looking to do kind of a similar game plan against the you know somewhat similar blue red white deck to the blue white deck. So Levy is using some tokens which look remarkably <laughs> like Raphael Levy, and he is busy um, sending card sideways, including the Mutavolt that you saw on the other side of the table at the top uh, match we've just watched. So we're going to see a Snapcaster Mage come down. It targets and uh, there you see the scores it's zero zero in this one levy unsurprisingly is ahead and about to be one presumes a lot further ahead yeah i mean this this attack is going to be pretty good for him and he's already got a garrick relentless out which you know as a planeswalker is still a threat against a control deck even if it's kind of meant to stop the aggro decks Planeswalkers are basically the bane of the control deck, right? Yeah, the best answer to Planeswalkers is just to attack them with a creature. It doesn't cost you any cards. But, you know, control decks are not usually flush with creatures to attack with. Right, which is one of the reasons I think we've seen War Leader Helix, War Leader's Helix become such a fixture in the blue-white-red deck. Yeah, it's actually killing Liliana the Veil and Garrick Relentless is just like two of its big tasks, and that's one of the reasons that, you know, it sees play. Yeah, so as we mentioned, Evan Hosu, uh, not long for a world of 16 life. He's down to five now, and Levy has everything in the world on board. Uh, he's going to offer up one of the big hits from M14 uh, as Garanjing Ooze, and uh, that comes down. Ha Hasu had targeted the syncopate in his graveyard, mm -hmm. so it has flashback. Uh, but yeah, I think his team's deciding whether they want to syncopate it or just use their mana for just another Snapcaster mage. Yeah, because they want to kill Garrick, it seems like. Yeah. It seemed like that's what they were pointing to. I mean, I think he has other concerns. <laughs> <laughs> like being at five? Yes. Yeah. And here you see Raph doing something that a lot of uh, maybe less experienced players wouldn't do, is playing another creature into an already large board. Which he's not just, he's not scared of Wrath because he knows his opponent uh, would have cast it last turn if he had it. So you've got to think that. <laughs> yeah, th there we go. Thank you so much. And that is 1 0 to France. Looks like a Ranker is the team to play on. <laughs> <laughs> Ranker and Mutavolt. Show off your magic colors by purchasing new Planeswalker apparel at mtgmerch.com. Guys, I've been listening to the booth a lot this weekend. I think it's time we start lying, because let's face it, we all want the blue one. So surely, come on, somebody tell us we want something else. I want the blue one stitched together with the green one. I don't think anyone's really surprised there. <laughs> yeah, the Momir Big Civic Visionary shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for my blue-green planeswalker. I feel like it's been coming for a long time now. Mm. Mm. We'll have to wait and see. We are going to the back table now. Uh, so we're getting all three matches on camera, which is great. You've got Timothée Simono of France. This is the Grand Prix London winner from earlier this year. And we're deep in game one. Simono is down to four. Adrian Corbel for the Hungarians on 11. And as you can see, we've got some pretty horrific Howl at the Moon action going on with Ravager of the Fells aplenty as we see Wow, it's vampire time. Here it, comes Olivia. It's a regular Hammer Film Fest here. <laughs> yeah. really, really it's actually is. really tough to get two Ravager Fells on opposing sides without them killing each other <laughs> when they flip. So this is a pretty rare board situation, though the Olivia makes it, you know, 
<laughs> that, that, that whole, you know, horse and pony show, a little less relevant. <laughs> So, Adrian Korbel, there you see him. Um, he comes here as part of the Hungarian team. He's 29 years old. No pro tour experience for him, but he's played in a bunch of GPs with a positive record. And again, one of the things we've seen this week, BDM, is that a lot of the teams that got into the top eight had strength in depth, not just big name plus three. Oh, a a absolutely. And, and I think one of the things we're also seeing is, uh, if, you know, if you're if you're a PTQ player at home, maybe someone who's been to a couple of pro tours, you know, the World Magic Cup is, is a pretty exciting way to get yourself onto this big stage and, and maybe propel yourself to a, a pro tour career. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I've said this many times, but net networking is really important, kind of knowing the people who, you know, who know a lot more about pro tours. And by getting onto the World Cup team, you're going to, you know, form a relationship with the captain of the team, someone who presumably has a lot of pro points. Yep, it must be quite nice to be Josh Asher Layton's friend. <laughs> well, I mean, it certainly it certainly helps. Like he knows yeah. what he knows what he's talking about. You can learn from him, and absolutely. I think that was a pretty big boon to the rest of the U.S. team this year. Completely, absolutely. Incidentally, just to give you some context for the game you're watching here, Simino on the left, you see a huge land disparity between the two. He got stuck on three land. Corbel had a rack Joss's return for four, <laughs> leaving him just two cards in hand. And uh, you see now that uh, we've got Mizium Mortars or. Mortier de Misium, I think, as it rather disappointingly appears to be in French. <laughs> Looks like he also has a life being zombie in hand there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, the, Rakdos Return is really one of the key cards in the Jund Mirror here, just because it doesn't matter how much removal they have, if you lead off with a Rakdos Return, it wipes them down to zero cards in hand, and then you can just play your threats, and again, whoever sticks the last threat wins, so wiping all the removal is a really big deal. In blue-white-red mirrors, Luis, you can look at the land count and kind of see who's ahead in the game <laughs> just by looking at the land count. This is Jun mid-range. Is it? It's certainly not as important. But what? How much difference does it make having a ton of extra land? It, it, it's a very big deal. If say that Olivia had switched sides, this game would be al almost over <laughs> sure. already. Because Olivia is the most hands down the most important card to have out in the mirror, and also requires a lot of lands to be really effective. Mm -hmm. Simino on the left has just four, and just to add insult to injury, Adrian pops down land number nine for Hungary. Though in, in this case, those nine lands are not beating that Olivia, so <laughs> no. I suppose you can, you know, I suppose it's fair, even though there's only one red source uh, over on Simino's side. Right. And keep, keep in mind, we, we saw Corbel pick up his card and look at it for a second on top of his deck, you know, clearly. Well, actually, not clearly playing bonfires because we've seen people doing that in limited. Now. <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, obviously looking for the bonfire. Yeah, and, and it's not a card you would normally want to sideboard out, especially not all of them. So it, it's very plausible that he could could have drawn a bonfire. Of course, when he played his overgrown tomb, the <laughs> illusion was shattered. So a reminder that so far, Gabor Kochish of Hungary leads Jan Guthman of France by one to zero. But French fans, good news, Raphael Levy took down Evan Hossu in their game one. In we go with Olivia Voldaren and a wolf. I think that Corbel is going to want to take the opportunity to trade wolves here if he can. Olivia is, is much less effective when there are no other creatures in play. There's actually no one to grow off of, because yeah. like a vampire, it needs to feed, so. <laughs> and and Simino hadn't played a card. I mean, theoretically, don't you want to take that opportunity to, you know, he couldn't kill your wolf. Mm -hmm. If he had played a second red source after combat, he could have. Yeah, you, it's a, it's not a guarantee, but it's a reasonable assumption that uh, he could have it. Whoa. Uh, well. <laughs> We're going to have a lesson in Olivia's here. Yeah, th th that was a draw step. And so a really funny thing here is normally being the, the second person to play Olivia is by far the worst, but uh, that's not how it's going to turn out this time. I, I believe we're just going to see Olivia get stolen right here. And then due to the new rules changes, wow. he's going to go ahead and choose his opponent's Olivia to sacrifice. <laughs> uh, bye. Wow. Well, that was that's a swing. I mean... You know, that needs to be answered within the next turn or two, or this game is going to be completely turned around. And, and Timothy just played the last card out of his hand in that life bane zombie. Mm. Yeah, so th there are no secrets here. I do like attacking with the wolf before making the Olivia play. I mean, Tim Simino did decide not to trade, but your, your opponent does have less information. I mean, he's, he's not going to, he's tapped out. You, you might as well not show him the Olivia before giving him the option to block. And now Simono draws. That's not the kind of draw step that looks like you're about to do amazing things. Let's see. 
In goes the life bane zombie. It has intimidate, of course. Olivia is not frightened. No. And there aren't very many burn spells. I mean, Arachnos return would be that would be lethal here. So there aren't very many burn spells you do have to worry about. So I think that uh, taking it is your best chance to win the game, even if you do risk losing to to potentially a burn spell. That's probably what they're talking about with Tamas Nag, the Hungarian national champion, who is eschewing playing uh, here. And uh, Simono is just like, yeah. Yeah, that was a tough game. I mean, those life totals were low enough that it was the, the first person to draw something good would have won. So we will head back to the front table very shortly. Looking to ignite your competitive spark? Take your game to a Grand Prix and see how you fare against the best players in your region, as well as top visiting Magic pros. Upcoming Grand Prix include Warsaw, Oakland, Kitakyushu, and Prague. For more information, visit wizards.com forward slash Grand Prix. Yeah, I hope to see lots of you in Warsaw next weekend. Uh, terrific venue. Um, I love the Polish Magic community. I can't wait to go there next weekend. Very excited. One of the it's one of the highlights of the European Tour this year, I would say. And I know a couple of guys from the World Championship are sticking around. Uh, uh, Josh, Shahar, and Reed are all going to be there as well. Oh, fantastic. So you get to see three out of the top four from the World Champs <laughs> yep. at the next European Grand Prix. If you weren't thinking of coming, you should really come and meet these guys, get a chance to play against some of them. But we're back on the front. And here, Kochish leads 1-0 to zero over Jan Guthman of France. Couple of blue-white lands. Though the Hell of Fountain was pretty clearly drawn this turn, otherwise it would have been played last turn, yeah. so worth noting. So there you see a hand of Dissipate and Restoration Angel <laughs> and uh, Sphinx's Revelation there. Voice of Resurgence once again making Dissipate, you know, a much less attractive card. So Hungary leads by two to one in the first set of games. Normally, uh, Jan would be very happy to just dissipate the Strangler of Gash and, wor not, and not worry about it, but th that will give Kostis a, an elemental token if he does. Four points of power, but he delays taking two for a turn. He does, and, and if he does have a Supreme Verdict, it's not the worst. You can just give them tokens, you know, and you just wrath them all away. But if that's not on the horizon here, then, you know, it's really hard. Celestial Flare is another card that really loses value once you have, like, in order to kill Voice of Resurgence with Celestial Flare, you have to give them two tokens. <laughs> there you see the French trying to plan, and in the end, it is Dissipate. So there's the elemental token. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that token is not hasty. Cochise lays land number three, passes the turn. No, Guthman got an Azorius Charm, so could get rid of a token at some point should he feel the urge. But he's going to just run out. Slams an angel into play. Yeah, Restoration Angel. Down and it comes. Again, he has to main phase it because this voice, this this voice is impacting the game like almost no other card in Gabor's deck could of this game. Yes, I mean it's an extraordinary, and and I don't mean that necessarily in a directly sort of how wonderful way. It's just an extraordinary magic card, Voice of Resurgence. It's also an extraordinary magic card, Sublime Archangel. Yeah, and that yeah. is this is exactly the situation you want it for. It lets you push one of your creatures through, you know, a big blocker. AKA a six-six. Yeah. Triply exalted elemental token. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's a lot of exalted, isn't it? Really, that really is Hallelujah territory as it piles in. Guthman is at 12. And remember, Cochise, you see it at the bottom of your screen. He's 1-0 up. And well, Celestial Flare yeah. looks a little better when your opponent's playing Exalted Triggers. It does. <laughs> it, it, at this point, it's just going to be a fog since it'll, the elemental token will get replaced. But it is it is good against Sublime oh. Archangel in general. <laughs> Silverblade Paladin comes into hand. This is looking like one of my favorite cube draft decks. <laughs> yeah. And this green-white deck really demands Supreme Verdict in many of the games, while also having a lot of cards that fight successfully against Supreme Verdict. So in it comes as uh, Cochise announces all the triggers of the Exalted. Can you remember three and forget one? <laughs> uh, you could, yeah, you could say your guy's a 5-5 five -five when it's supposed to be a 6-6. Six -six. In case it gets Tysist at instant speed. <laughs> Well, they're not optional. If you remember them, presumably yeah. you're supposed they to remember They are remembered, them. yeah. But if you name the wrong thing by accident, that is allowed. 
Oh, this is this is <laughs> looking very grim. Yeah, this again. This this one voice of resurgence has caused no end of problems here for I mean, young he, Guzman. He, he can fog for a couple of turns here. Yeah, but it's it's even then. Even if he draws supreme verdict, he'll be at you know he'll have thrown a bunch of cards away, and Gabor is just slow rolling a bunch of creatures in his hand, in, including an advent to the worm. Yeah. So he like he like for example the silver blade paladin he doesn't have to play it because he's already presenting you know, close to lethal. Getting some uh, awesome judge information in my ear, which tells me that actually the exalted triggers, you're not obliged to point out until we get to the whole damage dealing part of the turn. That is true. Just at, at that point, you could still think your guy's a 6-6 because you miscounted, and that, that is now legal. Mm -hmm. Though not advisable. <laughs> As usual with the whole kind of blue-white control decks, the hands that you end up with as you die look really, really good. He's got all kinds of good stuff in his hand, Jan Guthman, but whether he's ever going to get to cast most of them in a profitable manner is really in doubt. That's Make, a huge board for coaches. Makes a worm token at the end of the turn. Another card which is a big swing here. This looks like a, w what Hungary wanted to play against this round. The way this deck's playing out, it looks like it was designed to do well against the blue-white control decks. Probably thinking a little more of blue, white, red, but he'll take blue, white just the same. Yeah, and I, I don't know which one they would rather play against, but because the blue, white deck was designed blue, white to play around Burning Earth, and they don't have any, presumably that that you know gives a, the nod to blue, white. Silver Blade Paladin. Yeah. Now I want to ask. I was going to say you're going to go in with everything <laughs> here, right? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, enjoy your celestial flare or your Azorius charm, buddy. Yeah. I, so I, I, it looks like the worm bonded with the paladin because they're the closest, so, but. Uh, <laughs> You didn't really know who to tell exactly. <laughs> Either just, way, that's a lot of creatures. He's actually just there to high-five them after combat. And there's yeah. Kochish, who's uh, looking pretty calm. And on the left is Jan Guthman, who is looking pretty dead. So he can Celestial Flare away the Abyssin's Pilgrim, but that actually doesn't change the amount of damage, though, because it puts a token into play. And then Azorius Charm away the ten, presumably dealing 10 damage worm. That'll leave uh, Kochis with enough with six creatures to make the elemental a 6-6, six, six, which actually does the full 12. So it actually looks lethal no matter how uh, Jan Guthman plays this here. And he doesn't actually have enough white to even cast all those spells anyway. <laughs> so we're going to kick off with an Azorius Charm. I don't think he's giving all these creatures lifelink. <laughs> prepared to run that out oh, there. He, he's drawing, gonna draw the card does he and <laughs> shake the hand. He's got three Terminus in his deck, so if he had oh, drawn Terminus... Wow. That would have been insane. So yeah, that was by far his, his, his best out, but yeah, looking at the sideboard, he, he does side in three Terminus. And Gabor Kochish defeats Jan Guthman of France by two to zero, and Hungary lead one match to nil. They're one away from their first ever team world title. Dak Faden is the greatest thief in the multiverse. Follow his adventures in the Magic the Gathering comic produced by IDW. A special promo card unique to the IDW comic series comes in each issue. Find out more about these comics at wizards.com forward slash magic merchandise. I think the greatest thief in the multiverse is Threaten. <laughs> I yeah. mean, uh, Treachery. Not Scroll? Well, tre Treachery has stolen a lot, a lot of games. We are on to the middle table once again. And now, well, France are under the gun. Raph Levy is ahead, though, here. This is his mono green deck against blue-white red flash, piloted by Irvin Hossu for Hungary. Remember, Hungary, one match away from the title. And there Arbor you see Elf Levy. eats a Pillar of Flame. As tends to happen when available. Yeah, Pillar of Flame is, you know, one of the cards that the blue red deck really, like, needs to, 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 to compete with these aggro decks. So Scavenging Ooze will come out for Levy. Were, were you surprised at all by the uh, Archangel of Thune uh, that, that we see uh, Hazu uh, holding on to? It's interesting. I mean, I, I hadn't really expected to see that, you know, quite quite yet, because I think Thunder Maw Hellkite in a lot of ways, you know, takes up a lot of the market share for the five drop spot. <laughs> but uh, also when the Hungarians are, are playing both of those cards in this deck, so... <laughs> You know, it, 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 as well as uh, Aetherlings, though, those are obviously like slotted in for different matchups. Archangel seems like it could provide pretty good against the aggro decks. I mean, they have a lot of life gain potentially in there because Azorius Charm can do that for you. You look down, Wall Leader's Helix gains you life, Sphinx's Revelation gains you life. In the sideboard, there's three Rocks Faith Mender, which all have lifelink. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like there's a, there's a package. It's the, you know, you, you play 
Faith Manor turn four, Archangel turn five. Meanwhile, here is Revenge of the Hunted. It's a miracle. Plus six, plus six. Trample must be blocked. Get it in the way. <laughs> Get it dead. Flick. As that auger <laughs> just gets flicked towards the scavenging. Yeah. Is. He That's... says flick, but really that L and that I run together very closely. I, I'm curious now how uh, Levy ended up boarding, because when we were talking earlier, Revenge of the Hunted did not sound like it was for the control decks in general. Yeah, I mean, he may he may just not have enough cards to take out. Yeah, and he may want answers to Archangel of Thune. He doesn't have, like, I, I wonder if he would have actually put plummets into a sideboard had he known how many <laughs> flyers he's playing against. That is, that is, like, a reasonably common mono green sideboard card. So, Levy with the only board presence other than land right now. You also see a Mutavolt uh, for Levy, and Mutavolt's definitely a theme of what we're seeing here in the World Magic Cup final as you get a look at the hand for the Hungarian, Detention Sphere, Azorius Charm, the Archangel of Thune. There's a War Leader's Helix there as well as he lays Clifftop Retreat. And now there's a... That looked like a pass the turn, and now maybe actually we've got something. But no, we do go on, and we go to Raph Levy, who has another two Revenge of the, <laughs> Revenge of the Hunted yeah, in hand. Definitely did not side yeah. them out. No, no, no. no, he sided him in. He so only yeah, has one yeah. in the main deck, so... <laughs> It's interesting because Azorius Charm really does fight against Revenge of the Hunted effectively, though R Levy also has a nice one in his sideboard of a Ranger's Guile. He might have sided in his three Ranger's Guiles as well and, and uh, trying to combo off with Revenge of the Hunted. <laughs> so Levy, who remains one of the premier players in the history of the game, Hall of Famer, of course. I don't think I can really ask you, Luis, how intimidating it is for opponents to play against you because you're such a lovely guy. I imagine <laughs> you don't often use that in the way that perhaps some other players do naturally. I mean, I think people would probably have a pretty good time getting beaten by you. Uh, I mean, I suppose it varies from player to player. I, I definitely had players who have said, you know, before the match, like, oh, I'm never going to beat you. And I don't think that's a great attitude to have. My experience is those players rarely do, in fact, beat you when they kind of come in thinking they're not going to. Sure. Well, there's always a way to lose in Magic, right? There's uh, always a way to there's, lose. There's, there aren't very many ways to win. There are a lot of ways to lose. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've been doing Hall of Fame interviews today as we're putting together mm -hmm. our package of stuff for uh, Dublin. Uh, cover your ears, earmuffs here, Luis. I don't want to ruin anything. <laughs> I've got giant earmuffs on. <laughs> they just don't work as intended. <laughs> but people were talking uh, about Luis being disarmingly nice. <laughs> yeah. It like, sounds so sinister. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it wasn't. It was meant as a compliment, but the, you know the idea that you're just so intimidating, and then at the same time so nice and put people at ease, and then they don't feel bad when you destroy them. Well, let's see whether Archangel of Thune is going to do some destroying because that is in play now for Irvin Hosu. Yeah, it's, it's looking really good here too. It's going to be able to attack next turn, and if Hosu has another creature, which he, he might even have like an Is It Staticaster in hand, it looks like, it yeah, actually wow. can get the bonus counter. <laughs> Predator Ooze uh, comes down for Levy. There you see Hosu's hand. Is It Staticaster, Azorius Charm, Detention Sphere. And here comes a Helix. Ooh, triggering, like, like we had said. I would like to gain a bunch of life, and then I'd like to make my guy Levy bigger. almost made a funny play last turn, which is... Mutavolt activate itself, then tap the Archdruid for an additional <laughs> green to filter colorless into green. <laughs> so in we go, and of course, it's lifelink. So Levy's to total is going to go down a lot, but much more importantly, Hossu's is going to go way up. And you've got to think we're well on the way to 1-1 one, one here. Yeah, I mean, now uh, Hossu has, has a Baneslayer in play. I mean, yeah. Archangel okay. Thune is already kind of out of control here. And moving on up, too. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> I, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> well, what's kind of interesting is, like, the idea that if you do that with a, an Augur of Bolas in play, and, you know, it goes 2, 4, 3, 5, you know, this turn an Augur would have gone to 3, 5. Yeah, and that's, that's actually a significant threat by itself. So it looks like we're going to see a Druid's Familiar. That's going to be soul bonded up. Predator Ooze will come in. It's indestructible. But look at that Archangel of Thune. Oh whenever you gain life. Also an infinite combo with Spike Feeder. Yeah, a and an infinite combo in a, with a Sacrifice Outlet with Kitchen Finks as well. Exactly. Uh, and there was me thinking it turned sideways and hit the three. <laughs> well, it can. I mean, that's what it's doing right now. So far, this is its you know, best success to date. Uh, but yeah. uh, 
I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, it, it did some feeding later. I must say, I'm really impressed at how many M14 cards have shown up pretty extensively this weekend. Uh, some of the formats have been a little warped, so we don't quite know how pure standard will evolve um, with the M14 cards, but there have been a lot around. Yeah, I mean, M14 has a lot of pretty impactful cards here. So Staticaster came in, shot the uh, shot the, the Druid, and then uh, got a little got a little something extra. We might, might actually see a Staticaster attack for <laughs> basically the first time I've ever seen. <laughs> what? Crazy talk. I mean, probably not still. The Archangel's still probably going to be the one actually delivering the death blow, but Staticaster could attack. Wolfir's Silverheart came into hand for Raphael Levy there. We know he's been stuck with those two Revenge of the Hunter, which do very, very little. The first one was great as a miracle, but uh, sitting there clogging up his hand, not so good. And now you see an Azorius Charm saying, I would like to unsoul bond you, unpair you, go away. And, that, that, and now that's that I've killed just, your elf. Yeah, that's actually just scoop phase just about, because Levy knows what he's drawing next turn. He's taking six from the Archangel this turn, so he's going to take seven next turn. And can't cast what he draws. Yeah. Because the elf is gone. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's been a good 10 minutes for Hungary. They are already 1-0 up as a result of Gabor Kochish defeating Jan Guthman in the green-white aggro for Hungary, blue-white flash matchup. And now here, Raf Levy is about to lose his lead, go from 1-0 to 1-1. Back table, Hungary leads 1-0. That's Adrian Korbel in the Jund mid-range mirror against Timothy Simono of France. Detention Sphere. Smash. The scavenging news does give Levy the possibility of surviving uh, now that he's able to gain a little life and, and not die in two hits from the Archangel, but it's going to require all his mana and he's going to end up at, at one or two at the end of it. Mm -hmm. Mind you, as we saw in some of the matches earlier today, finishing off at one is completely acceptable. Yeah. Draws a card he cannot cast this turn. We know it's the Druid's Familiar. And actually, playing for top eight yesterday, I saw Levy's opponent have double Gorklan Rampager, but choose the wrong creatures, put Levy to one, and Levy pulled back into it with Scavenging goes. Oh, wow. So that, that was an impressive victory. 27 to seven Not here. Not today, though. No, and that is one game all. We'd like to thank Gaming Etc. for being an official card retailer here at Worlds Week. Use the promo code WORLDCUP when ordering on GamingEtc.com to earn 10% of all singles and accessories. For more information, visit GamingEtc.com. Yep, you get through a lot of magic in five days, that's for sure. And uh, right now, uh, off camera, there are pretty much everyone from the World Magic Cup playing in free drafts. Um, it's one of the things I love that we don't, we don't just show them the door once they're gone from the tournament. We make sure that they stay and they have a great time over the remaining days of the event. And having participated in those drafts and some events that have not gone well, I can tell it's very much appreciated. <laughs> So, we're on to the back table again. It's the Jun Midrange Mirror. Yeah, sure. On the right, the players are deciding what they're going to do. You've got Adian Korbel for Hungary. And in the background there, on the right with the glasses, you see Tamas Nag, 75 lifetime pro points. He is the big mover and shaker in this Hungarian team that currently lead one match to zero. Simono is on the left. Do we see a Pyromaster in hand? It looks like, yeah, there's two Chandra Pyromasters in uh, the Hungarian Jund list. And mm -hmm. uh, I've been, you know, very interested in seeing, so, seeing some of that action. You certainly do. In fact, you see not one, <laughs> but two. Looks like they're both there. Mm -hmm. okay. Though I'm sure that uh, Adrodon would have traded it for a Farseek in yeah, a heartbeat. I was say, <laughs> can I shuffle this one back for a chance at a Farseek? Yeah. yeah. Terrain de Predilection. That's apparently the French stomping ground. Hmm. And it looks like neither player has Farseek, so, you know, we're going to have a closer game than you would have. When there's a, you know, a Farseek on the play versus no Farseek, it becomes really tough to come back sometimes. Mm -hmm. what? Life Bane Zombie on the... Well, that was, draw that, that was a very good, good draw. So let's see what we've got on the other side of the table. You've got a Bonfire of the Damned. You've got Garrick over there. Uh, is that for rolls? It's a Putrefy. Ah, uh, so Putrefy, yeah, sorry about that. And, so, and a bunch and of a lands. a couple of land, yeah. Yeah, so Simono has a hand that's actually protected against Life Bane Zombie. And a good hand in its own right, just removal spell into removal spell into Garrick is a good plan in the Jun Mirror. So there you see Lifebane Zombie, Intimidate, and that's why you're getting to see 
intimidate Simono's hand on the table while the Hungarians pour over what gets to go away. Green or white creature card, exile that card. And of course, they're writing it all down. Always a good idea. Pen and paper systems, sometimes better than a brain. Yup, yup. And Lifebeam Zombie, I think, was my pick coming into the event of mo the most underrated card. It was it was the sleeper card when uh, mm -hmm. when you asked me, you know, what, what people aren't really giving quite enough credit to. Yeah, I mean, and we, we saw it be good against Mono Red. You know, we saw it take... Uh, Boros Reckoner, Boros Reckoner. Boar Clan Rampager. Yeah. <laughs> if they're stuck on a mountain in Mutavault, yeah, Burning Tree Emissary. <laughs> Though that one's a little ambitious, like... <laughs> It, it almost happened. Yeah, I mean, it's close. So Simono will draw Duress here. That's pretty good. I, I assume one he's going to want to get draws, yeah. Suppose he's going to want to get rid of that Rakdos return. Yeah, I think that's a fairly likely. Since that's that's the card that, you know, a big Rakdos return swings the matchup more than almost any other card, aside from an Olivia that survives. So now we get to see the other hand. I guess, I guess that Underworld Connections is also a bit of a Yeah, there, there are multiple here. threats here. You can't take a Chandra because there are two, so taking one really doesn't accomplish a whole lot. And both Chandra and Underworld Connections essentially cost four because you really want to play Connections on an untapped land. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Rakdos to return as the pick here. You could take the Underworld Connections, but I, I really don't think that taking Chandra here really does what you want Duress to do. Well, yeah, t taking the connections also keeps you from, you know, maybe finding your fifth and sixth lands, which yeah. makes that Rakdos return it, a lot more scary. It does potentially blunt the Rakdos return. So I think taking the connections, mainly for that, actually looks like the best call, especially since the Thrag Tusk is already a pretty powerful play on five. The Chandra does help you hit land drops. It, it exiles the card, and if it's a land, you can just play it. How difficult is it to keep the analysis going when, in the same match, you've already been Rakdos returned once, you've discarded four cards and so on. Uh, is the temptation must be just to take it almost viscerally because you don't want that to happen to you again, whether or not it's the right play. Th that is a temptation. I, I would say at this point, especially, yeah, you know, the French team has a lot of good players and a good coach. I, I, I would be surprised if that, that was, if that was what played into their decision. Sure. More than it just being the right decision. I mean, some, that could also be the case. <laughs> they would dress a Thrag Toast if they could, but... Uh, yeah, I was thinking that. Alas, no. So, yeah, it looks like it's... I mean, it's definitely going to be one of the connections to Rakdos return. And it looks like they're veering towards... <laughs> the land of uncertainty. <laughs> and Rakdos return. Just use the Chaos Orb approach. Yeah. <laughs> See which card it lands on. I do think the tiebreaker there probably is that Chandra Pyromaster does help you find the fifth land. Looks like we're going to see, see her be activated this game since... Uh, Un so. Unless uh, Corbel draws a Huntmaster, Chandra is going to be the play. So you get a bonfire from Simono uh, just to wipe the board clean because Lifebane Zombie, great though it is, does only have one toughness. And when I was watching uh, John Mears in the World Championship, bonfires that were just in hand were often played to kill, uh, to kill about, Lifebane how Zombies. How about Olivia? You know, actually, uh, I think, especially since they know that uh, there's a Putrefy sitting in the French hand, I think Chandra <laughs> is the safer play here. It just gets you the most advantage. So, indeed, here comes Chandra Pyromancer. And nugging for one. One and one, and something can't block. <laughs> there we get a look at the newest uh, red In yeah, incarnation of Chandra. <laughs> yeah. Our, our Magic 2014 bingo card list is getting filled out quite nicely in, this, <laughs> uh, in these finals. Yeah, it's like it was planned, but... Uh, <laughs> And Simono did draw a Rakdos return there, which is one of the best ways to fight against Planeswalkers. But Chandra comes in at five loyalty if you plus one or so. Not being actually killed by the Rakdos return really makes that play a lot less effective. Hmm. Have you seen the ultimate on Chandra yet? Or do people sort of scoop before that turns up? I mean, it feels like you'd actually watch that happen. I haven't seen it happen, mainly because uh, the limited games where I've seen Chandra really have the most effect. She's, her zero has been used multiple times. Sure. It's like providing a steady stream of cards. Yeah. Which means that she doesn't always get up to ultimate. Land number five for Simono. The, the bluest Chandra's ever felt, right? Yeah, I mean, she's got like the Jace Bellerin so, aspect. Or, so I, I like playing the Garak here because the Rakdos friend doesn't quite finish off Chandra. I think just putting up, uh, you know, putting out a beast and just threatening to start attacking her is the most effective. Yeah, 
Simino is really hoping that uh, Hungary does not find their fifth land for that Thrag Tusk. But they have. It's a Kessig Wolf run. And a fine land it is. Any, any temptation to go for like a bonus Thrag Tusk here? Just you could. I mean, that, the, the only thing is that you have already a really good five drop and you have a land. So hitting a land isn't too bad because you get a free land out of the deal. But if you plus one Chandra, you do get to knock Garrick down to three, making it a little harder to draw cards off them. Well, the die may be moving of its own volition. There we go. <laughs> Up to six. Yeah, so knocking Garrick down to three and then playing the Thrag Tusk seems like a pretty good sequence of plays. Yeah, so it's one damage to the player, and that gets redirected then to the Planeswalker. Right, he, he's shortcutting when he points at the yeah. Planeswalker. Yeah, which is, you know, a pretty normal shortcut for people to take, and a pretty reasonable one, too. Indeed. Thragtus comes down, and as you see, it's an official shortcut. Judging is telling me in my ear that you can absolutely just go pointed at the Planeswalker. And we all understand that that means, well, the one damage that would have gone to you is going to the Planeswalker instead. So we're, we're going to see Arachnos return this time? Yeah, I mean, the, the problem with putrefying Thragdos because it leaves behind a buddy. So I think a, a big Rakdos return doesn't quite kill Chandra, but it does eliminate uh, Corbel's hand. And you don't really want to see the Underworld Connections or whatever else he's drawn over the last couple turns come out. You get a glimpse there at Stefan Soubrier, who is the member of the French team who is not playing uh, no. in these top eight matches. He is the coach. In his Chandra t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Ironically. Simono oh, sends wow. in at Chandra. Not willing to give up the Thrag Tusk. This makes the, the, the French decision much, much easier. Sure. Since uh, dropping Chandra to three means that oh, the Rakdos wow. return is incredibly effective. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Pass the turn. Huh, I did not expect that. Did so. you want to take two there? They had enough mana to actually still kill Chandra even without taking the two, so I'm curious what they're saving the Rakdos return for. I think that they want to protect their Garrick, since now, once Chandra plus ones on the beast, making unable to block Thrag Tusk, they can putrefy the Thrag Tusk, keeping Garrick alive. Oh, okay. The biggest vulnerability is that now that uh, the Hungarians get to play whatever spell they've drawn this turn. Mm. As well as, you know, whatever they've previously had. They, they, they get to play more spells, making the Rakdos return not quite as uh, devastating as it could have been. And a reminder that because Hungary leads 1-0 and Corbel leads 1-0, if he gets this game right, you have World Magic Cup champions. Hungary. Interesting. He, interesting that he doesn't use the plus one of the Chandra there. I guess he's going to draw a card, quote-unquote, draw a card with it. Yeah, it looks like his, his options are to, or his best choice here is to use the zero now that he's, he's gone by, which does, you know, is something you might want to use beforehand. You may, may might draw, like, a removal spell or another relevant card. Something sweet. Planeswalkers uh, make the game sweet. There are a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on here. <laughs> the Planeswalkers are playing a big part of it. This is like Garrick vs. Chandra dual decks. <laughs> Garrick versus Chandra Jund dual decks. There we go. Here, why don't you have mine? Again. All right. Beasts of Plenty. As far as I know, there is no overlap in language between uh, the French team and the Hungarians. I think they're relatively uh, spy-free yeah. <laughs> talking in their own language. Especially on the European teams, every now and then you have like a you know someone who's displaced from another country or yeah. someone who's picked up another language. Like I know the Estonian team had a, just a Belgian guy who just has been living in Estonia for the last five years. Yeah, the the Ir Irish team was was pretty uh, diverse, multilingual, <laughs> far of their backgrounds. So Blood Crypt not actually on top of the deck, just just exiled, but no longer exiled. <laughs> This is going to be an Olivia. It looked like they're tapping four for an Olivia, but they, they might be rethinking that. And Could be and, tapping four for an Underworld Connections. Yeah, and going for the Underworld Connections instead. Again, they still do know about the Putrefy, so uh, I, I would not expect them to play into it if they don't have to. Luckily, the knowledge of the Putrefy that keeps their Olivia back makes them more vulnerable to Rakdos return, which they do not know about. Got them coming and going. Nice. Uh, I mean, that's one of the combinations of the Jun deck. So, 
as you call it, paying four mana BDM, the wow. three for the card, but you put it on a land that you expect to be using. Pay a life, draw a card. So now Simino has to think about uh, putrefying that token. Is yeah, that the kind of value it, you want for that. It isn't exactly, but you 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 want to you're going to tap out this next turn, presumably for Rakdos return, and given that maybe they want to use the putrefy, because especially since they know they're emptying, if they know they're emptying the hand of Hungary, then they're not going to be concerned with any potential threats they have sandbagged. And so they they want to get a use out of the get get a use out of the putrefy here. Yeah, it's it's unlikely they'd never have a target, but putrefying the beast and tapping out for Rakdos return means that you really only have to worry about whatever it is they draw the next turn, plus the Underworld Connections, which is, I think having the Underworld Connections in play is, again, the biggest downside to, to not Rakdos returning the previous hand, or previous turn. Simon right. home must recover from win. this fairly, fairly okay. Yeah, I mean, it's still gonna be a close game. I mean, Garrick plus a Beast is, you know, is a fairly good good squad, but that that is the only, the, the only thing that the French have left. I mean, they can minus the Garrick this turn to draw a bunch of new cards, though. So, one Plains Walker bites the dust. We know there's another available, but then so do the French. I mean, it looks like it's, you know, it's pretty likely to be two beasts. If you're not, if you're going to tap out for Rakdos return, you don't really want to draw cards on that same turn. You won't be able to use them that turn. You'd rather just plus Garrick and just have two beasts in play. But if you're going to Rakdos return here, would you attack the Plains Walker? Yeah, I think hitting the Planeswalker to death with the Beast okay. and then just dealing all the damage to the player seems better. Okay, so essentially, it's essentially the same thing. You get a little more damage. Yeah, than you're the doing like one extra damage or two, maybe two extra damage, depending on which land they play. Because if they play a, a Shock Land, they're generally not going to want to pay two life to deal one damage. So, but if they play the Rootbound Crag, they'll you know deal the full five or whatever it ends up being. Again, the Underworld Connection is kind of muddying the waters here. Just knowing you can erect us return there, you know couple cards away isn't bad, but you know they're immediately going to draw two cards, like one at the end of their turn, one during their draw step, then be able to draw a third card on their own turn. So here we go. Seven mana. Rakdos return. Four, five. Let's put your hand in the bin. There it goes. So Olivia, the Chandra, and the Swamp. Still has, still has not activated Garrick yet this turn. No. I noticed you remembered that. Do you <laughs> yeah, finally, there we go. I was starting to think that maybe they, they'd forgotten. I, I would not have expected that to happen, but you know, stranger things have. <laughs> it's quite a lot on the line here, to be fair. That's often when things like that do happen. See what they find for sale at the black market there. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a Rakdos return drawn the other way. <laughs> right. Farseek and Rakdos return now in hand for Adrian Korbel of Hungary. And it's it's problematic that they're one uh, that Hungary is one mana short for killing Garrick with the Rakdos turn. Otherwise, it would be pretty easy just to do that. But given that you can't kill Garrick, there is you know some consideration in, in just drawing a card with Rakdos, uh, with Underworld connections, since it, you really do want to Rakdos return the Planeswalker completely away if you can. Corbel is under a good amount of pressure too. I mean, two beasts are going to hit him down to ten here, nine if he uses Underworld connections. And that's what he does. I'd like more cards, please. It's a land, Overgrown Tomb. Had he drawn that land instead of the Farseek uh, to go with the Rector's return, this this turn would have been a lot more uh, pleasant for <laughs> can, can, Adrian. Can you afford to take a turn off from that Rector's return, though? Yeah, it's can you, uh, can it's you tough. go to nine? I, I think that you do end up wanting to cast it this turn just because it costs so much mana that you, you have to assume you're drawing a business spell next turn or you are just dead, so you might as well just cast this. This also prevents uh, Simono from drawing cards off the Garrick, and it's going to be tough to beat an additional three or four cards depending on uh, if he draws another creature this turn. So Garrick takes lots of damage, but not enough. We're going to go back to France, and it looks like... Timothée Simono, Grand Prix London champion earlier this year, part of this team of young guns, as Raph Levy thinks of them, uh, bringing the, the goodness back to French magic as he piles in with the two beasts, still got a Planeswalker, loyalty up, <laughs> another beast, lethal on the board now for France. It's bonfire time. Yeah. yeah. Come on, fire. Yeah. And, and if you think bonfire is your only out, 
they could, if uh, Corbel draws, misses on Bonfire, could pass the turn, then use Underworld Connections during Sumino's turn to draw Bonfire as the first card drawn. Oh! <laughs> well, there we have it. <laughs> he wow! And he doesn't even have to do it for the full amount. I mean, you just do it for three here, and it kill, kills the Garrick and all the beasts. Garrick and his horde, as it were. <laughs> It's He's like, actually, in fact, it just occurred to him that he doesn't have to just yeah. slam tap all his mana. He's like, actually, yeah. Yeah. I could just do this for enough. And listen, that's a really clever play because the adrenaline has to be coursing through you when you do that. Wow. Empty board once again. It's the World Magic Cup trophy about to have Hungary's name written on it because when you bonfire like that, you've got to feel it has. I mean, that is, that is a sign, if, the, if anything <laughs> ever is. Yep. <laughs> Simunov has actually enough mana that <laughs> if he draws his own bonfire, the game also ends. <laughs> so that, that would be a... A, fi a fitting end. <laughs> yeah, it's like playing war. <laughs> Yeah, when you're in the phase of the game where the bonfires are all just lethal, it, every draw step is an exciting one. And that's what they meant when they <laughs> when they came up with miracles. They said, "Let's make the draw step exciting." Well, they succeeded. They certainly did. Simino. Luis would no there. doubt like it to have been a little less exciting. <laughs> yeah, well, if you if you watched the end of the World Magic Cup for uh, the U.S. team last year, <laughs> here we go. Let's see, draws. That's not a bonfire of the time. Yeah, it's, but it's, it's, it's a clock. Yeah. yeah. It's a two-turn clock here. What's back? <laughs> You'd like to take your card. It's not a very good deal if you don't. I ping myself. Yeah, so it was a swamp. And now another land drawn. Yep. And At last the end, turn, down to six. Last turn, Hungary could have used Underworld Connections on their main phase. But because it's unlikely that they would have played anything, it's better to wait and play around Duress, Life Bane, Zombie, Rakdos Return, all those things. Past the turn, adding him down to five, and this despite that miracle bonfire. <coughs> Simono 17 5 ahead. He sends in Life Bane Zombie, and that is going to be met by Putrefy. Go away, please. Uh -oh. Passing the turn with nothing against an active Underworld Connections is not the best feeling. <laughs> Draw another Underworld Connections. But that's also not the best feeling when you're at now four life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, well, I've committed to this plan. Oh, Scavenging oh, on fire. ooze. Wow! How good is the top of your deck, Adrian Corbel? Okay. I'd like to move myself out of range of bonfire now, if possible. Let's see, he can do seven with bonfire, so it looks like he's one green mana short. No, he's got uh, exactly enough to to go to to go to one off a of bonfire. Oh, wow. Oh, what must this be like watching in Budapest <laughs> yeah. right now when you're thinking, we are this close to being World Magic Cup champions. And around France, you're just going, will you give up already? Pack it in and let's have a game three. He was almost dead. Yep. So is he going to? If he goes to eight, he's 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 able to survive. If he's only going to seven here, no, I think he's only going to seven. No, he, he, okay, yeah, he he is at the full um, eight, and you might okay. as well play the underworld connections. So, back we go to France in this incredible game. He's drawn a far seek, and oh, but he has a, he has a dreadbore in hand for. Okay. Yeah, the, the scavenging his draw the turn prior was dreadbore, so yep. he's not actually dead to the scavenging is. But, and the Farseek again knocks him to enough mana to, that bonfire is lethal. <laughs> <laughs> Though it's likely those Underworld Connections would have been used either way. What an incredible wow. game of magic. If France go on to win the World Magic Cup from here, we'll look back on this one in wonder. But if Hungary do it, this will be the moment, because goodness me, it's been an incredible game. <laughs> and they're just chatting away like it's a peaceful <laughs> Sunday down at the local game store. Well, they're behind on life, but they're ahead just about everywhere else, including getting the first crack at their draw step and having two in connections to, you know, for a few more peaks. Now, w would you consider... Oh, it's 17, though. He's... he's Simino's very high. The bonfire's not going to be the... 
the way to victory here. No, no. Otherwise, I would consider maybe like trying to bonfire on his turn. Right, but right. I was going to say yeah. like toggling your, yeah. your underground uh, underworld connections. But you, you're going to settle for a couple of turns of three draw steps a turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I heard that's quite good. Corbo just wants to draw like a steady stream of Thrag Tusks. <laughs> that, that, that is, you know, pretty much what will get him out of his most common scenario to lose, which is an opposing bonfire. So untap, and now you see two Underworld Connections are live, ready to pay one life. It's a land. Normally that would be terrible news, but because of those Underworld Connections, here goes the first one. Corbo back down to seven. He draws off that. It's another land, I think. <laughs> Yep. Yes, it so was. So let's try Underworld Connections still, still again. Still terrible news. Still <laughs> terrible news. This game just keeps going on and surprising. Well, he had all the good top decks a minute ago. Now it's just land. They say bad news comes in threes. Yeah. Passes the turn. Simono, back we go. France, what have you got to offer? He's in range. Draws for the turn. Oh, I think that might be an ooze. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, let's... Well, let me take a look at your graveyard. He no no particular clue. reason. <laughs> no, I'm just curious. It looks like there's... One creature? One, one creature among both graveyards. All right. Yep, I got to make mine first. It did a lot of scavenging. So the ooze is one short of being lethal if Corbel uses both his underworld connections, which means he probably should just use both his underworld connections. Mm -hmm. Well, again, you said he's looking for a Thrag Tusk here. Yeah. And he's got Kessig Wolfren in play. He can make the game. It won't take very long once he gets a creature in play. So the Scavenging Ooze is up to a 3-3 for Simono. And despite multiple heroics from Corbel, we're back <laughs> With into a panic mode. <laughs> yeah, rootbound Greg. So here goes Underworld Connections number one. Corbel at five. It's a Garrick Primal Hunter. Hear a little bit of a, a rumble going on from the other team. Like, all right, that's pretty good. Yeah, that is far from the worst thing he could be doing right now. If he's going to use the other other rule connections, he would like to do that before he uh, he casts the Garrick. So they're they're probably deciding whether they want to do that. Looks like they've decided just to go with the Garrick. A reminder that waiting in the wings is Hall of Famer Rafael Levy and uh, for Hungary, Ervin Hossu with his blue-white-red flash deck. That's if it gets that far. We'll be going back there if Simono can even things up here. And now, and now uh, also worth noting, Corbel has the opportunity to bonfire on Simono's turn. Yes, if, 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 it ends up, if the ooze ends up being lethal somehow, then he could do that. Nope. He's like, nah. So yeah, if you're going to connection, you might as well look at your options I, first. You're probably going to get a Thrag Tusk no here. Yeah, they'll, they'll take a Thrag Tusk. <laughs> oh. No! Oh my goodness. The bonfire that could have happened at instant <laughs> speed. No insta bonfire now. Past the turn. There's an upkeep <laughs> where it could have happened. drum roll. In yeah. <laughs> drum roll from Subrié. What do they want? Let's do take you. a look. Oh. That? Is that Kessig Wolfrun? If that is, then... I think that's Kessig Wolf Run. <laughs> oh. The instant speed bonfire would have been so huge here. Instead, he got bonfire of the land. Yeah. Oh. In we go. And there is deep conversation and urgent conversation in Hungarian. <laughs> and I, I believe I understand enough Hungarian to go, why'd you tap your underworld connections on your turn? <laughs> Is, was that on your mother's side? You learnt that? <laughs> yeah. That's very good. Do you think they're attacking the Garrick? Block. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Pumpity pump, pump, pump. Watch all my land turn sideways. Oh, the dodging of bullets here has been extraordinary. Put out the flames. It's 1-1. Wow. One, one. Yes. Give them a big cheer. That is what I call Magic the Gathering, boys and girls. That it was incredible magic. And there's more to come here at the World Magic Cup 2013.
Magic 2014 is available now in Magic Online. Crack some packs for M14 booster draft and sealed deck queues right now. Starting August 2nd, you can enter 64 player premier drafts and top 8 sealed deck events to earn invitations to the Magic 2014 Release Events Championship to be played on August 18th. For more information, visit mtgonline.com. Okay, boys, deep breath now. <laughs> we may not see the likes of that game again for a while. Wow. And so we are going to see Rafael Levy against Ervin Hossu. Now, again, Hungary, you're still in the box seat here. Okay. Hungary leads 1-0. to zero. The players are tied 1-1. One, one. If Hossu, with his red, white, and blue flash deck, can beat Rafael Levy with his mono green, Hungary will be the World Magic Cup winners. Hung Hungary needs to win one of these two remaining games. That's right. France has to win both of them. Absolutely. And Levy's been in worse spots before, so I, I think he's probably pretty okay with it, though this is a very tense match for him. I'm interested in how much energy gets burned away when you are a Raf Levy in the situation where you are just desperate to have this match back in your hands and you're waiting for another match to finish, which, yes, you can take part in to an extent, but you're just praying for this match to be of relevance. It, it was interesting watching players yesterday uh, in the feature match area as they were being held for mm. start time, and we had a, a player in the same situation you found yourself in in San Diego, uh, playing a deciding match, and he's, you know, mauled to five on the play. Yeah, that, that and, happened against... And, uh, and he's waiting <laughs> 30 minutes for the camera. Yeah. You know, we're like, sorry. I was talking with uh, Simon Gertzen, actually, because it was against him that this happened, and, uh, I mean, it, it is agonizing, but, you know, at, now being on the coverage side, I understand why we do this. You, you, you want to show as much magic as you can to the people watching. Guys, I have a terrible feeling that what you are looking at there is a five-card <laughs> opening hand for Ervin Hossu, who went spell, 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 and a land. Levy here is on the play with mono green aggro. We might not be watching Raph Levy for very long here, boys. Right, no, his, if, if his draw is good. Sulfur <laughs> Falls, not a... Yeah. Not a steam vents, which he would have clearly steam vented and just killed that elf. Yeah, though that does give him now the opportunity to kill at least the Elvish Arch Druid before it gets out of control. Yeah, Elvish Arch Druid comes down and goes away, uh, but not before the initial Elvish Mystic got to deal a couple of points there. Uh, as we uh, or will do as we pile in. Now, one, two, three, let's have another Elvish Arch Druid and a young wolf. Levy. Firing on all cylinders. <laughs> this, 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 yeah. is, this is one of his good draws. There is a land which is really what uh, Hungary needs. Hungary basically needs to get to four and Supreme Verdict and then see just how essentially wrath-proof Raf's deck is. The Hungary for a mold of five, this is what you want against Levy's hand. And Levy doesn't actually have a Wolf or Silverheart or any of his other really heavy hitters in his hand. Mm -hmm. or, or the George Familiar that he loves. And you, you see why, because it comes in a little earlier than some of the other cards. Another land for Hungary. That is what they want. Levy draws. Yeah, the, <laughs> Hungary is on blue-red control at this point, though. <laughs> the, the, the white part has not shown up. And we already see one of those Revenge of the Hunted in hand uh, for Levy. And again, that's not really where you want it to be. That said, he's not that far away from actually casting the thing. And casting it as a, as a fireball for six is, you know, reasonable. He's used it as that many times this tournament. But mm -hmm. you want to do a little bit more damage before you do that. He's, he doesn't really have a fast clock here. Hungary draws Restoration Angel. Not what they want. They wanted to see more land. Land is Hungary's friend right now. Specifically a, a white land. Yeah. A, a land that's able <laughs> to make white mana, I should say. Raph lays no yet another forest. He has 18 total plus four mutavolt. <laughs> You know, something in common about every card in uh, <laughs> Hosu's hand. Yeah. He needs two white to cast that Supreme Verdict. He needs white for the rocks, Faith Mender. Yeah, Faith Mender is just a brick wall here, and it gains you multiple life a turn. And Levy's attacking with all ground 1-1, one -one, so... It, this is a, a kind of slow beatdown, though. It's speeding up rapidly. It's a crazy, crazy game. By the way, you remember one of the most exciting games we've seen for a long time that happened five minutes ago? <laughs> that made it 1-1 in that match. We might yeah. go back there. And there is a there is a land that is capable mm -hmm. of producing white mana. It looks reasonably likely we're going back there since uh, Revenge of the Hunted is now castable and will do a very good job of eliminating the Rock's Faith Mender. 
<laughs> Oddly enough, Supreme Verdict leaves Levy with the same total power he already has. <laughs> Fourth man are in pass from Hungary, but Irvin Hossu is not long for this world, we think. Levy takes a look. And puts his five mana together. You can't says how many flash cuts? your way around Revenge of the Hunted. Here comes Wolfir Wolf Silverheart. Silverheart actually. Oh wow. This is what he's looking for, and this might deal enough damage this turn that even yes. if Hossu draws a Supreme Verdict or land for Supreme Verdict. Well, that's been accepted by Hosu. You see that huge swathe of cards in hand. Levy piles everything in. Of course, we're going to see a Restoration Angel, which finally he's able to cast. Just running the chumps here. Yep. And still almost infinite damage coming through. Hosu down to essentially no chance. Yeah, even if he draws a white... I mean, his path to victory here is drawing a white land for Supreme Verdict, then Raf not drawing a six land to cast uh, Revenge of the Hunted <laughs> to finish him off. But it looks like uh, that is not going to be the case. It looks like he drew a Mutaval? Um, yeah, uh, more uh, Mutaval. Yeah. They sound similar. Which has exactly the same utility as Mutaval here, which is to say zero. <laughs> <laughs> that Hungry leads 1-0, which has been there for a while, is about to say, Teams tied, 1-1 players tied 1-1 one, one in the match that is going to decide it all. There's the Rock's Faith Mender. Levy draws. It's <laughs> a forest. <laughs> draws a it, land. Put it down. Make Revenge of the Hunted. Say thanks very much. Let's get to the decider. And he, Levy is technically a point short if he didn't have Revenge of the Hunted because the, the Faith Mender could block the 8-8, eight, eight, gain two life, go up to go up to 10 or 9 and take 8. But as it turns out, uh, if Levy casts Revenge of the Hunted, he does win this game. Interesting that he's having a conversation with teammates. Here is Revenge of the Hunted. Oh, no. Some of my guy. Um, <laughs> and there's the handshake. Uh, <laughs> the assisted wow. handshake. Let me show you how to play this hand. <laughs> Take it, shake his. And two matches are now done. We are tied wow. at one. It comes down to game three of the final of the final. Timothée Simino, Grand Prix London champion from France up against Adrian Corbel, Jund Midrange. Are we channeling Alexander Hain once again? <laughs> is it going to be a day of miracles for France or for Hungary? You guys uh, got to step up your Channel Fireball t-shirt sh game. I, I got to tell you, Ref Levy has replaced you with the best looking shirts uh, on the Pro Tour. With his, uh, like, the, the polo-ish, like... The, with the button-down blue oh. shirt with the TCG player logo. Right, it's right. pretty sweet. So, then we get a look at Simino on the left, and then we see Corbel on the right. So this game decides it all. Hungary begins. It's close to a mirror, jund all the way to decide the trophy, the title, magic history. Corbel with I've the second. Learned lap. anything about this jund match? Mm -hmm. I want to cast Farseek on this turn. There it <laughs> there is. There we go. <laughs> When, when your opponent pays two life on turn two, it's not good news. <laughs> Advantage Hungary. The only good thing is, is as we've discussed before, when your opponent does pay, play shock lands in the first two turns, the only lands they can possibly have in their hand are more shock lands, which does make it more likely that they don't have a ton of land left. So the turn two Farsake into the missed land drop on turn three kind of you know, <laughs> gives back the advantage. Sure. And taking a look at uh, Corbel's hand, it actually looks like that would be the case if he doesn't draw land this turn. But I, I assume he has a handful of four drops that he can... Uh... Yeah, he's got both Huntmaster and Olivia as, as good plays here. So, Simono will look to play land number two. He does so. And we're going to see a far seat back the other way. It seems only fitting. <laughs> as a neutral, all you want to hear is a decent game. <laughs> not decided by people just running out of land. That's all we ask for. Once you get past that, let the chips fall where they may. Currently, it looks like they're both out of land. Yeah. It, lo it looks like uh, it looks like Simino might have a Woodland Cemetery in his hand. Okay. If we take a look here. So he will be hitting his fourth land, and he, even if he doesn't, he also has a Lifebane Zombie. 
You've got double Huntmaster of the Fells waiting to happen. Rakdos' return, which has played a big part in this match, uh, part of the reason that we saw in that last game, both teams desperately go, what's on the top of my deck? So this is a big turn here for Hungary. If they if they draw their fourth land and play a Huntmaster of the Fells, you know, that's a that's a good start. If they if they're unable to play a Huntmaster, it looks like they wouldn't actually have a play at all. If uh, if Corbel loses this match, does he think about that underworld connections? I, I, it would be hard to avoid doing so, I think. Ooh, that is a Thragtus that has come into hand for Hungary. France, Passes the turn. France has to smell blood here. <laughs> Thrag Tusk back the other way. Thrag gone, en français. Do you uh, do you zombie here, or do you uh, try to stick your uh, your werewolf? When your opponent can't play spells, I I, I think that uh, playing the werewolf is kind of nice. But I could definitely see just playing the zombie if you really thought your opponent you know was stuck on maybe just one hunt master. I think this just goes for, for the throat much better. There aren't very many answers to Huntmaster that, you know, don't leave you with a wolf in play, barring like a miracle bonfire. And if your opponent really can't cast a spell, they're dead very, very quickly. And we see the fourth land has not been forthcoming. Scavenging news instead. Uh, that's not what you want. No, and I think the mood is getting a little somber over on the Hungarian side as a uh, Things, things are not progressing in the way they had hoped. But for France, a fifth land means Thrag Tusk could come down this turn. We could see Life Bane Zombie. I think you just want to keep the pressure on and just play the Thrag Tusk. It's, it's, <laughs> it's very hard to kill. Even trading the Huntmaster here for the Ooze seems, seems very reasonable. Hungary were one nil up. They were one nil up in the match. There were underworld connections aplenty, card draw aplenty, and the chance for a miracle bonfire in an opposing upkeep that never happened. Now it's 1-1, one, 1-1, one, 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 and this game decides the trophy. Thrag Tusk. That's, that's the slam of someone who's happy. Yeah. You, you was, can just hear the card just hit the table. That was a, that a, was a crisp Be Thrag a land. Tusk. It's a land. Okay, that's at least something. This game is not over yet. It's no. it's going to be an uphill battle, but but that makes a difference. If there was if there was no land there, you'd be pretty much yeah. If there was no land there, this game yeah. would be over, I think. But I think a, a a hunt master here. I mean, a lot of the cards in the Jun deck are there specifically because they get you out of a tough spot. Sure. So hunt master plus backup. I think the main difference here is that France is so far ahead they can afford to take a turn to Rakdos return uh, Corbel's hand, which Corbel's just not going to have that luxury basically ever which means that France is just going to be ahead on cards in life the entire time. You know what's good at evening that kind of thing up, though? A miracle bonfire of the damned. It, it is, but <laughs> Hungary also has already drawn two bonfires, which just lessens the chances they're able to do so. <laughs> Indeed. So they're just, they're just you know, getting hit from all angles with a kind of subpar luck here. Just means they didn't plead hard enough with the top of their deck. Yeah, I mean, they almost got it last game with an almost uh, incredible comeback, so... Do you, uh, you double block Thrag Tusk here and hope for the bonfire? Yeah, I think double blocking Thrag Tusk does lead to, to victory more than just trading for a wolf and taking a bunch of damage. You just have to, a, a miracle bonfire is your best way to get back into the game. Say if Simono plays like another hunt, hunt master and then you can just draw a bonfire and wipe their entire board. Rakdos return in hand for Simono. I have a hard time imagining that the whole of, you know, the French team is not consulting on this, these plays, though. I think the whole of the French nation is <laughs> consulting on these plays, Luis. Uh, there uh, there goes like, the Rakdos yeah, return. Return for four. So. What card do you keep? The um, Tusk. It's either Thrag Tusk or Olivia. The Bonfires and the Rakdos Return are really just not going to do that much for you. I think, I think Thrag Tusk is the, is the card that is most likely to get you back into this. You do have to draw the land, but... The fact that Olivia can't really block the beast to turn your player is a little unfortunate. She is the swingiest card, though. If she if she survives, she can randomly just steal a game. Well, and also, if he thinks that there could be a Lifebane zombie coming, he won't lose it on the following turn. He can definitely play Olivia this turn. Yeah. Was that the... That was the land that <laughs> would have the fifth land that was too late. 
He's locking himself into taking three from the Beast this turn, but... So now, Olivia against Beast and Wolf. No hand on the right for Corbel. Still plenty of action for Simono. Olivia might actually stabilize this game, though. Olivia mm -hmm. is that powerful of a card. She's really good. But right now she needs to be because that is all the Hungarian game plan. Simono has a chance to craft possibilities with Lifebane Zombie, has a chance to craft game with what's already on the board, sends in the Beast. Of course, Corbel's going to take that right now. Yeah, keeping Olivia was unquestionably right now. I, I look at it some more. The fact that Thrag Tusk will help you trade off for a couple cards, but you're so many cards behind that you need a card that will stop all the cards, which Olivia is really the only one. And Lifebane Zombie is exceptionally weak against Olivia. It only costs two to kill a Lifebane Zombie. He loads up. Yeah, let's make that board big. That Super A just goes, I would helpfully like to offer you this token. So, Hungary really wants to draw a land this turn. Don't looks believe they have. It's the second thing they want to draw this turn. <laughs> well, yeah, a bonfire is, is already... I think they might have drawn a Kessig Wolf run here, which oh, w yep. which would let them kill the Huntmaster, because that's step one. It's going to flip, so you, you do have to just kill it. Then it lets them kill the Lifebane Zombie. Now they have an Olivia that can hold off the other two creatures, or other three creatures, and... Even if, uh, even if France does end up suiciding the beast into drop them to three, we've We've got a game. We've got an Olivia that's now poised to take over the board. Potentially. We've got a bonfire of the damned coming from France. <laughs> we always potentially have a bonfire. <laughs> I think it was Farseek that turned up there. 27-7, but that's not the whole story by any means. You've got a legendary vampire trying to suck the blood out of the French. Corbel goes to three here. Let's see it. Now there's going to be four creatures in play. If the if another Huntmaster comes down, so Hungary actually does need to to draw something. You can hear a pin drop. If they have a Huntmaster, arena. it looks like they actually only have a life bane zombie. So Hungary actually has this board stabilized. France actually does need to top deck out of this. They have a number of turns. They're at twenty seven, but as the board stands, Hungary is actually ahead. Surprisingly enough. Yeah. What a game and what a match. This life bane zombie. And Simono is going to pass here. If they cast Farseek, whatever they do, don't look at your top card. <laughs> <laughs> there, that way lies madness. So he's, he's <laughs> I, I gotta tell you, I saw that he didn't look at his top card the last in the last game when he Farseek. Yeah. And I think that was exactly the reason. He has not done so yet, that is for sure. Have a little flick through. So next turn, Hungry actually has an interesting decision. Uh, if they, they can kill the life bin zombie and one of the wolves, and then they could potentially just attack for eight and take two back. He never looked. That's that's a good idea. Because if they if they trade eight for two, they go to one, but they're dead to any burn spell anyway. It it might be right. actually worth trying to get the race going because right now their race is against Bonfire of the Damned. It's not it's not against a ton else. I mean, removal that kills Olivia will put the game back into anyone's hands with right. them behind on life. But Bonfire is the real card that it, just kills it, them. It's Bonfire and Kessig Wolf run. Yeah, Rakdos Return also does the trick. Though, yeah. so they can play around Kessig Wolfram by just waiting. That might be a reason to wait. If the opponent plays a Kessig Wolfram, you can just w wait, and then you don't have to shoot until they actually commit to wolf running. These, these are the tough decisions. These, these are where it is helpful to have friends, but uh, <laughs> it does it does it is a pretty big responsibility that, the, especially on the team captain. Actually, isn't the problem with waiting that they can also wait? <laughs> well, if you if you wait for a turn, you get to kill all their creatures, and then you can just start attacking with a with a reckless abandon. But uh, <laughs> now they have, they drew a hunt master of the fells. That is a pretty amazing draw. It doesn't keep keep them alive from bonfire, but it does make the attack a lot safer. Yeah, gets in for seven. Gets Timothy back down to his starting twenty. So they are choosing to attack this way. They are dead to Kessig Wolfron under this, under this uh, play, play route, though. Here we go. There you see the top of the deck. Here comes the draw. That'll be a far seek, then. All right. 20 to 3. Smash. Kill. 
Olivia's just a two-turn clock now, so France has two draw steps to draw an answer. We are almost out of time across three days. We have brought you <laughs> 69 Please. teams Let's go ahead and get that, get that wolf where it belongs. Yeah. <laughs> Farseek increases the odds of finding a bonfire or a Rakdos return. The tension that both these teams are feeling right now has got to be unbelievable. Uh, it's just... There's, there's more tension at a team event when you're relying on some other people and pulling for your teammates than maybe at an individual event. Yeah, I mean, I, I've certainly felt very, very tense when I played in, like, a pro tour, especially in, like, a top eight. But in teams, I've not gotten to this point. The, the best the best I performed, actually, was last year in the World Magic Cup. And, you know, when they drew Bonfire on that last turn, it was... <laughs> well, you can see our reactions on camera. <laughs> They've been immortalized. So, uh... Hopefully, uh, both these teams are hoping to not have to repeat right. that experience. Like, please, no gifts. Please, no gifts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gifts. Oh, it's like gifts ungiven. <laughs> gifts ungiven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. We are really down to the wire here. Hungary has drawn a land. Hungary will turn Olivia Voldaren sideways and make us one turn away, we think. One, two, three, four. Shoot, shoot. Get a bigger day. Yeah. Move on up the D and D chain. Smash. In comes Olivia. Simono now. Right <laughs> on the wire. This is the draft. Someone <laughs> is about to win the World Magic Cup. Hungary flip passes it. the turn. Just flip it. Come on then, <laughs> flip it. That's what they're asking you for. Turn it over. What have you drawn? What is it? What is it? What is it? Ragdos return! Ragdos return! And they've done it! The French have done it! That is unbelievable magic! They've won everything in the game, and now they've won the World Magic Cup. Contra nous de la tyrannie, l'étendard sanglo, élevé. France win! France win! France win! BDM! What was that like? Uh, that was, I mean, knowing Raph for a long time, uh, that's just, uh, it's hard for me to not be just filled with, filled with this great warm feeling for him and so happy for him and, and, the, and the French team, the entire country. He, he's talked very emotionally about returning France to magic prominence. It was, you know, once one of the most, you know, powerful magic countries. It's kind of, uh, you know, as some of the older players have moved away and, and to see these young guys guided by, you know, the elder statesman of 31, <laughs> uh, Raphael Levy uh, back, it's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> Staggering. Really. Yes. And when we talk about their arc of triumph and you look at, we saw them, we talked at the desk at the beginning of day two. We saw that they were ready. We saw that they saw this in their destiny. Listen, we're going to get ready for what's down on the floor of the awards ceremony. But first, we're going to kick it back to the news desk, where I imagine they are in just as much of a heap as we are. Let's see how they're doing. Zach Hill and first, Marshall Sutcliffe. Wow. So Zach and I were sitting at the desk watching this. I get to hear Rich. He's freaking out on the thing, and I've got tingles, and Zach's doing the Zach thing I over here. I broke this table yeah. in half. That was counting. unbelievable. That was crazy top deck. I mean, just grinding back turn after turn after turn with Olivia just wiping the board, but then the Rakdos return right off the top. Utterly unreal match. Clutch, clutch victory for the French team. Such great stuff. We get really fantastic matches these days, Zach, and uh, the game seems to be healthier than ever. Amazing stuff. We saw the, uh, the French flag flying in the foreground there <laughs> as we have our World Magic Cup champions, and they are France. Let's talk about them just a little bit here. We're going to have an award ceremony, actually, in a few minutes that we're going to be doing with Rich. He's got to get over there and get ready, but talk us through the decks a little bit. Uh, maybe maybe the Jun deck there at the end. Unbelievable stuff. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing, you know, uh, most most teams opted uh, with Jun and blue, white, red. We see France going Jun, but then a straight blue, white control deck dodging the power of Burning Earth. Also, just more consistent mana, generally speaking, and uh, not a lot of dead burn spells game one, so we saw that give them a little bit of an advantage mm -hmm. in the mirror, taking fewer damage, no, you know, pillars of flame clogging up their hand and able to get aggressive with uh, 
uh, Moreland Hunt and, and, and able to present threats in the end of the opponent's turn. Great choice, but I think if we're talking about decks, yes. the talk of the tournament has got to be Raphael Levin's, yeah. I mean, World Magic Cup winning mono green yes. aggro deck, uh, his tribal ooze deck. Yeah, yeah that's uh, it. we called it almost jokingly, yeah. but seriously, that deck is insane. I mean, and just how many of these things did you expect to be tearing it up today? You've got Revenge of the Hunted, you've got Young Wolf, you've got <laughs> Druid's Familiar, you have Predator Ooze. I keep going, uh, Prey Upon. Are these all, are these I cards like the Druid's Familiar in there. Druid's Familiar is that just the bear, you know, he's, he, he transfers his bareness onto other, he I does. Mean, it's, it's, it's a really insane deck, and I mean, in, in a work of genius by Levy. I, I really feel comfortable saying that. I mean, we just saw him decimating opponents all day. Over and over and over. Every time he was in the feature match area and every time I walked by, he was just destroying people with that deck. Well, against control decks, you know, they couldn't kill his creatures. They'd bring in angels and stuff. He would just uh, revenge the hunted right over their creatures. In mirror matches, he had more acceleration, more size. I mean, it seemed like he had a great matchup against everything we saw him playing against. Yeah, you know, the Predator Ooze seemed to be one of the really Really, really great cards out of that deck. And, you know, we've seen it in the mid range green decks before, particularly mono green. Uh, is the ones talk to us a little bit about how good that deck was, uh, that card was for him, and what it does. What card? Predator I was thinking, about, Predator <laughs> I was thinking about just the the entirety of the deck. You know, I mean, Predator Ooze, incredible in a mid range fight. You know, it, it, if your opponent's attacking with a Thrag Tusk, is attacking with anything on the ground, obviously it just blocks it. Acts like a removal spell. Yes. And then when it starts attacking, particularly in concert with Ranker, it can start ending the game very quickly because it grows and grows and grows. You chump it, it grows even bigger. With Prey Upon, obviously. Obviously, it can grow and fight at the same time. And, and really, I, I mentioned Ranker. To me, this is one of the first decks we've seen. You know, Infect played Ranker, but it was kind of cheaty, you know, yes. because it's like, oh, it deals extra damage. Right. Hexproof plays Ranker, but it needs a bunch of enchantments. This is one of the first really fair Ranker decks we've seen. Mm -hmm. Ranker, obviously, one of the most exciting cards coming out of M13, a card everyone really talked about. But oh, it, it made a big splash for sure. Yeah, it's taken almost a year to get, reach its full potential. That's right. Now, let's take a look at Timothy Simono. We saw him on the camera in that last section, and he was the one who did it. You know, he was the one who got to draw that card and finish off. Now I see that they've got one Rakdos' return to the main. <laughs> There's a couple more on the sideboard as well. Well, so. yeah, you really want to be going up to three returns post-board. It lets you capitalize on getting a slight mana advantage. It's another way to gain card advantage. It's actually really important to kill Planeswalkers. We saw uh, their opponents bring in, ch or, and even main deck, Chandra Pyromaster to go along with Liliana and Garrick and direct damage in addition to ending the game. Also serves as Planeswalker removal. So three copies yes. of Rakdos return really gave Simino an edge in that matchup. Yeah, and it also finished off the matchup to make France our World Magic Cup champion. So what we've got now is we've got an award ceremony. This is something that we do out here on the Pro Tour stage now. And while this isn't technically a Pro Tour, mm -hmm. it's just as big as a World Magic Cup. So I'm going to send it over to our own Richard Hagen. He's in the feature match area to bring you France, our new World Magic Cup winners.